Hello there. My name is Ed Kaneen and I'm one of the co-principals of South Wales Baptist College. And with my colleague Rosa Hunt, we were delighted to be able to lead the valedictory service last night for our leaving students as we commissioned them for their future ministry. We held it in Salem Chapel, Tontaig, and it was a wonderful celebration and an opportunity to meet together and to thank God for the work that he's done in our lives. It was also, of course, a bittersweet moment because we say farewell to students who have become friends, uh, but we also breathe a sigh of relief that this academic year has come to an end because it's been a challenging year not least because of the fact that we've had to shift everything online. And I guess with you, we've experienced many of the challenges that this has brought. And last night was no exception. Uh, we didn't have the best internet connection as we streamed the service. And so if you were attempting to watch and had problems, uh, I do apologise for this. However, we did record the service, and as you will see shortly, uh, at least for most of the time, there was uh, a much better picture and audio feed. The first 30 minutes uh, are not so good, uh, but are at least audible, but after that you'll be able to hear the sermon, as well as hear our leaving students share something of what God has laid on their hearts as they move on to the next stage. We're so grateful to our preacher, Haley, who brought the theme of making a bigger table. We began the service by sharing in these words, and you may like to read them with me now. For everyone born, a place at the table, whatever our age, whatever our gender, whatever our ability, whatever our ethnicity, this is the place to build a bigger table, to delight in God's abundance. For everyone born a time at the table, whatever our history, whatever our family, whatever our schooling, whatever our wealth, this is the time to build a bigger table, to delight in God's abundance. This is the place, as are all places. This is the time, as are all times. We are the people, as are all people. For everyone born, heaven's banquet touches earth, here and now. Let us delight in God's abundance. Let us praise God. Blessed be God's name. And this is going to be Matthew, the special one to say tonight. Our next one of the leading students is going to come up and read that in the world. And then the Reverend Dr. Cody and Lisa, who is one of our tutors, who are part of leaders in English. And that will be immediately followed by a prayer of confession led by a number of our leading students who are not
Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 to verse 5. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mass of seed, which a man took and planted in the field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of all garden plants and becomes the tree, so that the birds of the air come and catch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and makes into a large amount of flour as it worked all through all the world. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So it was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophets. I will open my mouth in parables. I will alter things hidden since the creation of the world. This is the gospel of Christ. Jesus said, Whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Lord, you welcomed and went to people who are on the fringes of society, those who were rejected by others. Forgive us of the times we have been hardened against people when we have rejected others because of our own prejudices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are a faithful God who keeps your promises. You never leave us or forsake us. You always keep your word. Forgive us when people have relied on us and we have let them down, <coughs> when we have failed to keep our word, when we have left others at their lowest moment. Lord, in your mercy, you are the Lord. Lord, you are a loving God. You loved us who sacrificed for your life. Forgive us for our own selfishness, will we for our own needs by the Lord of one Lord, in your mercy, we love you. Silence, let's confess our own personal sins before God, our loving Heavenly Father. Lord, in accordance with your mercy and great love, forgive us our sins and lead us to love you and others in the way we should. In Jesus' name. Thank you very much. This is Barnhouse. <laughs> and um, not only has she got married in the last couple of weeks, but on Monday of this week, she has also been called as uh, one of the ministers of Gordon Benmark Community Church. So it's been a lot of change in a couple of weeks for Laura. And so thanks so much for being part of this. And we also offer our congratulations on the many things that are good and godly. That God has given you the life this um, Apologies to those online. Uh, I don't know why we have lost uh, audio from the PA. That's why the audio is, is poor. So thank you for all the feedback. Uh, there's not a lot we can do at it at the moment. So with many apologies, but hopefully you at least hear something. 
It's been a, a challenging year for us all, hasn't it? And it's been a challenging year for us as a college too. We are now all much more familiar than we would wish to be with the uh, dust on our computer screens. And we're also much more familiar that we're sitting on our own and watching videos and reading stuff on a screen. But we've made it through. And I do want to take the opportunity to uh, thank all of the students present here as well as online for their grace and patience in this difficult year. Uh, staff have tried really hard. We've done our best. And I know it hasn't been perfect. But thank you for showing grace and patience to us. But I also want to take the opportunity to thank the staff for just doing an amazing job and going above and beyond in a time when most of us would rather just pull back the uh, bedclothes and hide away from the world. And so to all the tutors, and uh, in particular to Rosa, as well as to Han, who is up there, and to Rob, and to Anita, and to Anna, huge thanks for the hard work this year. Let me give them a round of applause. And I also want to take the opportunity to uh, not just celebrate the fact that we have people who are living today, but also the fact that we have uh, 10 students or thereabouts who will be joining us in September. And that's uh, absolutely brilliant. The college is bigger than it has been, I think, uh, in my time here. And that's exciting, although it creates its own problems, of course. Um, but in particular, we want to welcome Lisa and David, both of whom are here, who will be starting uh, at the college on the ministerial track, but who've been part of Pathways for the last couple of years. And Pathways has also been going online and uh, I won't say struggling through because actually they've been going from strength to strength. But a real thanks to all those who taught on Pathways this year, and particularly to John, who has coordinated all and to be seeing in a moment. But a round of applause for them, please. We are really grateful for the partnerships that we share with the Baptist Union of Great Britain, the Baptist Union of Wales, uh, Presbyterian Church in Wales, and uh, indeed in different ways with others, and included in that is Cardiff University. And um, so Professor James Hennity, the head of the School of History, Archaeology, and Religion, can't be here, but he sends his best wishes to everybody at this this point in their, their journey, both of ministry as well as with the university. And we are looking forward in September to starting a new centre for the study of theology and ministry in Cardiff University. And so please pray for us as that new venture begins and as we have a, a new opportunity to share in the life of a significant academic institution, both in Wales as well as in the world. And we've just seen Kofi, uh, who has been um, just reading to us, and we're really grateful to Kofi, who, although the students here have encountered it uh, very much, has been uh, one of the vanguards of South Wales Baptist College teaching uh, within public university this year. And Kofi, we're really grateful to you for your help. Thank you. We've also benefited from uh, new pastoral tutors this year. And uh, I don't know if Helen and Nick are with us online, but we'll just take the time to say thank you very much to them. I know that has been uh, appreciated. But I, I feel uh, I will just finish off by saying that we did do a, a student survey um, a few weeks ago just to see how things go. Uh, how have we coped this year? And there were many really helpful comments 
but there was only one shooter who was mentioned in dispatches and uh, particularly praised for their care, for their love, and for all they contributed this year. And that is Rosa. And so I do want to single Rosa out because not only has she been ministering here and keeping things going, but she's been doing the same for us at the college. So Rosa, thank you ever so much. We're going to hear how we've seen from a few others' uh, perspectives now. And uh, first of all, uh, Charmella, uh, who is one of our leading students, will come and share for a couple of minutes. Then Betty Williams. Betty Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, there you are. Hello, Betty Williams is then going to come. She's been uh, going through the MTH. And then we'll hear a Crescent student perspective from one of our senior students, uh, Misha. And so over to you. Oh, wow. Well, I found your on Crescent. She has just become the president of the Alabama Web. And that's, uh, well, it's obviously an honor for you, but I know that during your time you've been working on that presidential speech. And so I'm glad that you finally had the opportunity to give it. Well, congratulations. The new school model that I really like, which was announced this week, is really like Alpha Wendor, Roots and Horizons. But I think this model, I felt, it should better the my time to the college. Our new school model was really like Alpha Wendor, Roots and Horizons. But I think this model, I felt, it should better my time to the college. But my roots, as many of you already know, is in North Cambridge. I live with, with an unpaid family in a village called Krimit. But Krimit is on top of the Ten Hills, which is encapsulated in this conflict by a very famous poet, Wild Williams. Near the land, voyage down, carried the only time on me, was from heaven before and the black bar. Now, I believe in this conflict, he tells us that whatever happens, Wherever we go, the Pretend Games will always be a part of who we are. Now, I wish to keep the traditional web setting with the Commander Gang, Hand Pump, and Playground part of the annual calendar. And I have spoken at length to anywhere, <laughs> anywhere who would listen in college about the Welsh culture and who would today, about the trials and tribulations I have with the English language every month. <laughs> I can even remember trying to explain the joys of singing to Kelly Dant one evening in Chiraka. Now, I studied for two years with Reverend Denzel Mosa, who called him in Bangor, and he felt I needed to widen my horizons. And he arranged me very kindly to sit in South Wales Baptist College, which I have done for the last two years. Now, I turned up in Chiraka on my very first week, and I will be honest. I felt like a square peg in a large hole. To try and explain that it was a culture shock was a bit of an understatement. I questioned and prayed to God to find the right place, and God gave me the answer to one of our four principles. In my first start to be an interview with Rosa, I told her of my concerns, of feeling out of my depth, that my cultural background would in some way maybe hold me back from embracing everything that the college has to offer. And she reassured me that my heritage, when her tardive and wish yet, even her death, the roots I have in my home and my culture is my strength, and I should embrace that, to use it through my mission work. Being rooted where I am allows me to open people's horizons to Jesus. The last two years have been such a blessing, with friendships created and praying to continue after that time in college is coming to an end. I have made books with you all, but you have also opened my horizons to new possibilities. I would like to finish with a short poem by Pre Bath Dick George, who is a national seller of the new poet. And he's also a companion, which is very close to me, and the poem is called Kabash, Friend. The Mauritian and Hannah Hanot, my name was there and called my name dot. 
And so on the right, on the right, on the right, the mouth is in front. And so on the right is there, the way he draws out. By the way, he needs a man to go out. By the way, he needs a horse to wear me. And the bus and the bus. Thank you. 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 I hope you will be able to you to just a quick taste of Baptist band. Here I am. I've been studying the Park Science MTH course the last two years at the supervision of the wonderful South Southwest Baptist College, having completed my first degree 28 years ago. So it's been a shock to the system also to the back into education. I was attracted to the MTH course because of the structure of the course and the pathways available to me. And the course led me to the Southwest Baptist College. And from the minute I walked in the door, I immediately sensed not only welcome, but a friendly atmosphere and a sense of belonging to a very close fit college community. Studying within the structure of a different denominational college to what I'm used to has been a very positive experience for me. So we are happy to turn in and to see people all the time. I think it's something you know as well. <laughs> Well, I've met so many new people and I've made so many new friends studying through uh, studying at the college, lifelong friends, and I'm very much looking forward to sharing with them in their ministries. The course has given me the opportunity to engage in discussions, has opened my mind to new horizons, and uh, pushed boundaries as well, I would say. And I must say that I found the support of the pastoral group to be addressing during the past 18 months. And I like to thank Southwest Baptist College for opening the doors to someone such as myself who won't necessarily serve as a minister within the Baptist Union of Wales. Who knows? Yeah. But yes, <laughs> I feel that we do serve together, don't we? Whatever our denomination, we serve together and share the same vision within the Christian ministry. Thank you for being here, my colleague. Thank you for being part of your college family. It's been a privilege and a blessing. Thank you for being part of your college family. Thank you. Seems like women have got the platform today. <laughs> so it has been a real privilege to be senior student this year, together with my colleague Perth, who couldn't be here by today. Um, and I have discovered a new side of myself, one that tends to burst into tears in situations such as this. And so I have written something out which I'm going to share with you, um, a rather than try to read it. So here it goes. We'll never forget this year, will we? The year of the mountaintop, the valley, the plain, the desert, walking through joy and pain, discovering grace where we just thought we would, accomplishing things we did not think we could, Carried and died in never alone, we have travelled together, somehow we have grown. By grace we have made it, in that grace we stand, awestruck, exhausted, yet led by his hand. Through teaching and essay, sorrow and praise, sleepless nights, Christmas parties, very long days, through doubt and difficulty, laughter and grace, on Zoom and teams and finally, in person, face to face. We have prayed together, listened for the still small voice, walked as disciples together we rejoice in him who has called us all to serve and to shine. And who says to each one of us, this child is mine. I know there is pride in God's father heart as he looked at those he has set apart. Your journeys inspired, showed others the way. As you go up to serve him, we promise to pray. A special thank you from us all to staff who have laboured and listened and taught us and cared, opened their hearts, our horizons, and shared so much of their knowledge, experience, life with passion and insight. We hope you are aware how much we appreciate your wisdom and care. <laughs> Uh, 
such an amazing privilege to work at South Wales Baptist College. It's not only me, you get to meet all these incredible students, really, really talented. But also, we have an amazing staff. And I cannot tell you how hard the staff of work is in all pulled together. I could not possibly do this job on my own. I'm just so, so grateful to be working alongside everything as a person of grace and kindness and wisdom and also very great intelligence. But we also have some super people on the staff and other uh, tutors you left over the radar interviews, Craig. And that leaves Siva, who is a wonderful colleague and is now going to be part of my interviews at the College of Advisor to talk about Siva. The old thank you, Rosa, and it is indeed a great privilege uh, to have this role of um, awarding the college prizes for this year. Each year we have a series of, of prizes to award um, with a small uh, financial um, component. I'm not handing out that bit here right now, um, but just uh, certificates. And I think it's fair to say when we discuss the awarding of prizes, there are so many who want to give prizes to everybody because. Uh, behind every single uh, student in this college, and it is a huge um, achievement in uh, what we've been doing uh, th this year. But it is good for us to be able to celebrate some uh, particular uh, people that we do with these uh, prizes. And so, the uh, and I shall I shall bring up the names of the uh, uh, those who were awarded the prizes and invite you to uh, come up to receive the certificate. Uh, so the uh, J. Ethel Jones Prize uh, for Pastoral Studies goes to. <laughs> um, for uh, his um, goes to John Brewer. Specifically, um, we wanted to uh, note that this is particularly related to your incredibly creative assignments, um, uh, especially in Baptist history and principles, uh, for which uh, John wrote a song that we will be singing uh, in the service uh, today. So it's great to celebrate that. Thank you very much. The J. Mansell John Prize for Academic Studies is awarded to Hannah. The Evelyn Stevens Prize for Biblical Studies is awarded jointly to Misha Peterson, uh, Misha Pedersen, sorry, and Mervyn Rigg. Uh, Mervyn is, I think, um, online, I'm not sure we can do this in my but we'll give you that in college um, uh, sometime, but Misha, if you'd like to come see. Yeah. Uh, Thank you so much. Now, it's my delight to introduce John 
Rodriguez, uh, who is going to uh, award uh, the art prize. <laughs> It's been wonderful over the last few years that uh, Pathways course has been able to celebrate uh, in, in this service, our digital service, uh, with the rest of the college. Um, and also celebrating the awards giving as well. Um, and so the Pathways Awards this year goes to one of our graduating group. Uh, she was, in fact, the first person ever to complete all the 24 assignments uh, that uh, make up the entire Pathways course. Uh, all of them at the highest level, and it was the first time uh, that that feat has been achieved. Um, uh, I'm really pleased to say it's been achieved um, once since then as well, which is wonderful. Um, but this particular person, through really uh, challenging circumstances and setbacks, has continued to produce just an excellent quality of work. Uh, we're really missing her on the course, um, so a big congratulations, and please come and join me again. And what we'd like you to do, please, is you call your name up to come up to the front. Each of you has chosen a Bible verse. And so perhaps you could just uh, say just very briefly a little bit about where you're going after you leave college. So um, some of you are staying in the church where you already are, so you might just want to remind us of that. Um, some of you will be going to Pastures New, so you say that. Just read out your verse and tell us why you've chosen that verse. And then if you could return to your seat, and once all eight of you have done that, we're going to say our college covenant together, and then I'll ask, we'll, we'll, Ed and I will ask the Levy students to stand and we will pray the valedictory prayer for you. So, if we could start with Paul, Paul Asbridge. Would you come up, please? Thank you, Paul. Hi, <laughs> good to see you. Um, I shall be continuing now in ministry in Clonelwy in St Asaph, having been appointed as minister in uh, January of this year. Uh, it's quite a challenge and there is joy and apprehension as I move forward in this work. And I think the reading that I've chosen may help understand, may help you understand why. It's 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 8 to 11. Above all, love each other deeply because love 
covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. The reason love covers a multitude of sins. You can read that two ways. I get it wrong. I will get it wrong. And I've got news for you. So will you. Where I can respond to the love people shows me, show me, I can also remember that the love that God has shown me in the first place by bringing me to where I am now, salvation, everlasting life. That is God's covering of love that covers my sins. Whatever gifts you've got, we all have gifts. We all have gifts. And as we, as we use them in our hospitality, in our walk, in whichever way, we should remember, remember always. And as we speak, we should remember that it's the words God has given us that we speak. We should remember that our actions in our walk as ministers, as Christians, wherever we are, when we struggle, it's in the strength of God. For I can do nothing without God's strength. And in the process, and this is why I think it's so important to me, to my heart as a minister, all the glory, all the glory goes to God. That's why. Thank you, Paul. And before you leave, hold on, because we've got something for each of you. So part of the theme of today's service is hospitality. That's why Anne built a bigger table and actually came up in your reading, didn't it? It did. It indeed. certainly did. Okay. And so each of you leaving students are going to be presented with a set of cutlery and a napkin right. just to remind you of this. So I'll give you that. Lovely. And also a stiff cut. God Definitely bless you, Paul. Thank we'll, you very we'll much. We'll pray for all of you in a minute. Thank you. And we welcome Laura again to come and share the scripture that God has laid upon her heart. Well, good evening. Um, I've not prepared anything. I know Paul's fair plays, and he's done a great job. So what I share is not going to be as good as Paul's. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm carrying on with my church. So I was made team minister with responsibility for children, youth and families at Kuiper Mine Community Church. And I'm really excited. I can't wait. Um, so I love the community. I love the church. And I love children, young people and families. So I'm really excited. Um, the verses I've picked today um, is from Jeremiah 1 verses 5 to 8. Uh, the reason I've picked them is because when I started out working with children and youth, these were the verses that were given to me by my pastor Doug at my commission and service five years ago. Um, and the reason I've chosen them today is because I feel every, well, everybody's got a call in. God's calling everybody to something. And it doesn't matter if that's ministry. Um, it, it could be anything. And with God's help, we can do all things. So... I hope to use this text, I hope in my job to inspire other people, to inspire children and youth to live authentically for Jesus. And that's my heart. I really, really want to see um, children, youth, families make disciples um, and follow Christ for themselves. So this is the these, this is a passage I've chosen. It says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. 
So in Christ, you can do all things. Um, and like Paul said, it's all for his glory. So, thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Yeah. There we are. Oh, thank you. Use it well. I was saying, we need a few bits more. You know, a few more Excellent, so there sorry. we are, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> all right, God bless you, Lord. Thank you. John Brewer. Go, Johnny, go, 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 as the song says. <laughs> and um, it's been marvellous the last three years at college. It's been the toughest thing I've ever done academically. Make no mistake about it. But friends I have made, relationships I have made, they will stay forever. And the what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be staying um, in my, uh, the church where I'm at placement at, which is Ainon Baptist Church, Sandy Hill in glorious Pembrokeshire, west of Wales. And they've called me as their part-time minister, and I start in September. But a particular verse of scripture which really spoke to me and which I had at my induction as lay pastor was from Zechariah 3, verses 1 to 7. For me, this is about preparation, transformation, and ordination. Yes, you get three points and a poem. That's right. Uh, then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this man a burning stick? snatch from the fire. I don't know about you. I felt that many times that I have been spared. Verse three, now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. The angel said to those who were standing before him, take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, see, I have taken away your sin and now I put fine garments upon you. There's been a process at the college. There's been a process of learning and unlearning and relearning and taking off and putting back on in a new way things of the Lord. Verse five, then I said, put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood by. And this is the verse, verse six, seven, the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord gave this charge to Joshua. And it's a charge for all of us ministers. This is what the Lord Almighty says. If you will walk in obedience to me and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and have charge of my courts. And I will give you a place among those standing here. Beloved, I had that in my induction, but I will also have this in my ordination. In the, on the 30th of October. Um, can I just say a massive thank you to all the tutors, all the staff, the principals, fellow students, and those who are going to be joining. You will have the time of your life. Get ready for change, because it's about preparation, transformation, and ordination. Glory to God. Amen. Now, I think you can play with spoons, can't you? Probably. Oh, yeah. yeah you thank can play you very anything. much. God bless so. you, John. God bless you too. Let's give it a round of applause. One element of transformation that is kind of represented in the spoons for me is getting larger and larger. And my pastoral group, um, of whom Laura and who, the, the person who's coming next, Sarah, uh, this morning we all went out to a cafe and had a large breakfast together. And I think in many ways this symbolises what college life is not quite all about, but at least in part about. And Sarah, you've been a wonderful community builder as part of the college. Please come and share your verse with us as you prepare to leave. Thanks, Ed. I did wonder where you were going with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sarah. Um, I'm staying in the church where I've been for the last seven years, um, but in a different capacity now that I've done this training. Um, my verse is Isaiah 43, verses 18 to 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. 
Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And it was, um, these verses really special to me seven years ago when I started in Rubina. And then three and a half years ago when I was sort of thinking about pursuing this call, once again, these verses came up. Um, and I think as I enter this new season again, it's um, these verses that I'll be remembering. Um, just when we think we're in that wilderness and that wasteland, um, God is the one that makes the way. And so I'm just thankful to him for his faithfulness in these last three years. Thank you. Now you'll have seen all the students receiving a, an envelope as well as their cutlery and this is because all of these students have been doing ministerial formation with us. But the next person to come up to the front and the next person who'll be leaving had no need to do ministerial formation because she'd already been a minister for 28 years, as you have heard. And so, Betty Wynne, the lady door to front, please. <laughs> I still need the training. <laughs> I've chosen this verse, and may I just apologize? It's my fault for emailing Craig at midnight. <laughs> it's from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 5, and not the first letter to the Corinthians. Um, Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. Am hani gan fod y dogeth hon genim drwy diw, nid ydym yn digaloni. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Am hynny, o herwydd bod gennym y wenu dogeth hon drwy drigaredd diw nid ydym yn digol o ni. I can sicr, uh, well certainly, I think we do not lose heart, and I think that's ex extremely important at the moment as we're trying to find our way out of this out of this lockdown period, and uh, I shall be returning to my churches in Camarthen this evening. And um, certainly what I've learned at college will, be, will hopefully enrich the ministry of our churches. But then Paul reminds us that uh, what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord with ourselves as your servants. It is not our ministry. It's Jesus' ministry. And it's our, um, it's our privilege to be a part of his ministry. And I think that's a very important thing to remember. And these verses certainly have stayed with me throughout my ministry, and they will certainly stay with me for, uh, for the coming years. We do not lose heart, for what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Thank you. Yeah, but you both Oh, thank you. <laughs> Super the Mendare? <laughs> Anything go with them? <laughs> Thank you, Rosie. Earlier today and last night, we have been talking about and meeting with um, pioneers and chaplains in this recognition that actually uh, the mission of God doesn't really get contained by these four walls in which we are meeting, but rather God is already at work out in this world around us, bringing his good and gracious kingdom to all. And uh, it's partly with that in mind that I'm delighted to introduce Ale Gwyn uh, because uh, his political career has taken off this year. He stood in the recent Wales elections and we are grateful to God that we have been able to be a, a part of this formation that he has taken with him to serve in the community. So, uh, Alad, you have many other strings to your bow, including this year having started a, a national prayer meeting across Wales. But do come up and share your verse with us now, please. Um, 
Um, yeah, gwaith ar loeso um, yn y gymuned ydy y nodi uh, wedi goffen. Yn y coleg ydw i'n mor ddiolchgar i'r staff yma am ei harweiniad arbennig iawn iawn yn ystod y cyfnod yn y coleg. Um, my heart is for doing pioneering work in the community. Um, and um, that's the path I hope to, to follow. I just want to extend uh, um, my uh, heartfelt thanks to, to the staff of the college for their wonderful guidance over uh, my period at the college. Um, at Modded, we did there with um, Archive of Gosanaith Hedima at the at Notahin all of their Yako, Yako Yin. Um, in the south, he in the now. All the other day, Pope Hoy da a Pope Hoth ber faith. This kind of man told you that Goliath died near. I could do every fifteen a half now with a half shot to get that sir. I give you a day here, a can hit love me. To ya ir gwir yonedd, er mwyn i ni fod yn rhyw fath o flaen ffrwyth o'i creaduriaid. Uh, this is a chosen come from James uh, 1, 17 to 18. And uh, in these verses, James talks about us as being the first fruits of all he created. Er hesom ar adnod yma wedi peli at ei yn arbennig ydy bod nhw'n gosod her i ni, her i ni'n gyrchol iawn i ni uh, i fod yn arloeswyr, yn genhadwyr, yn arweinwyr yn ein cenhedlaeth ni. Uh, Mae'n gyfoesedd rhyfeddol yn y geiri yma. Mae bron fel bod y stori yn cychwyn hefo ni. Ni ydy blaen ffrwyth i greadigaeth. So the uh, verses I've chosen talks about us being the first, first fruit of all he created. And uh, the particular appeal to me is that it does actually give us a, a huge and immediate challenge a direct challenge for us to be pioneers, to be leaders, to be mission people um, in our generation. It's almost as, as if the story actually starts with us right now. That's the challenge that God has placed upon us uh, in our generation. I said a moment ago that uh, God's grace extends to all, but does it really extend even to Anglicans? Well, the answer is yes, it turns out. And uh, Steve, uh, where is Steve? Oh, yeah, behind you. Steve comes, uh, having recently been appointed to serve uh, in the Clandaff Diocese with the Church in Wales. So our loss is their gain, but we hope to at least continue the good relationships we've already established. But Steve, please come and share your verse. Thank you, Ed. So um, my, my verse is from Exodus 33, um, verses 13 and 14. And, and um, it starts with the word if. Uh, and, and I love the word if, because it's a, a little tiny word, but it's got huge um, meaning behind it. So it says this, if it is true that you look favorably on me, let me know your ways so I may understand you more fully and continue in, to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your very own people. The Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Um, I, I had no desire to, to, to leave Gilgal. I, I was very happy there as the associate pastor. Um, but there was this drive in me uh, for, for the nation of Wales. And I think somebody saw that in me and I was approached to ask if I would uh, apply for the role of, of senior engagement worker with the Flandaff Diocese, um, which I did. I, I laid my cards on the table uh, and said who I was and, and what my theology was. And they still took me on. <laughs> uh, I am so happy to, to be working with uh, our Anglican friends uh, and so excited to see what God uh, is going to do. 
Uh, I believe that God remembers our nation and, and, and that's what was key uh, about this verse. Uh, and I pray every day that God would remember our nation, <coughs> Wales, and the promise that, that God will be with us and will give us rest, which is amazing. Thank you. And the camera. Thank you. Now, Rola on the Bendant, Nida Flea. <laughs> Last but definitely not least, Sean. Something occurred to me this morning. We had a professional photographer in college today and was taking photos of the students and so on, and we had a group. And he pointed to Sean and he said, Can the small one come down the front? <laughs> and I thought to myself, he has no idea <laughs> because she looks small, but Shan is a giant. She's a giant for Jesus. So come on, giant Shan, come out the front. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, I've what what's happening next year? Um, I've recently accepted a call to a new pastorate that's been set up in my local area. Um, in Ebenezer David Egrosuru and um, a Greig in Newcastle Emlyn, where I've been a placement for a year. They've joined teams, they've joined together to give me a call as a minister. So I'm very excited, slightly daunted, reality starting to sink in. But I hope I know well, I pray that I'll give my all and I'll work my socks off. I'm, I I know anyway, I'll work my hardest for them. Um, my verse is, I read them in English and in Welsh, is uh, Matthew 5, 14 to 16. Um, I chose them because um, I love the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and also, I truly believe that Jesus told us that he was the light of the world. But now we are Christ's body on this earth. And we need to lead people back to Christ. So many have left our churches. And we are that light to lead them back so this, these are the verses I've chosen. Chid i'r golau sydd yn y byd, mae'n ymhosib cuddio dinas sydd wedi hadeladu i'r ben bryn, a does neb yn goleu o lamp i'w gosod o dan folen. Na, dych chi'n gosod lamp ar fwrdd er mwyn iddi rhoi golau bawb yn y tŷ. Dyna sut dylech golau chi ddysglerio, er mwyn i bobl folych tad yn y nefoedd, wrth weld y pethau da dych chi'n ei gwneud. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine to others, so that may, may you see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Bo bendith ar adallen ar grando. Amen. Shan, Now, as members of the college community, we covenant to one another. We covenant to watch over one another and walk with each other. And we have actually a college covenant that we say together. And so I'm going to invite all the members of the college, whether you're uh, staff or pathways, whatever, uh, to come and share with Ed and me uh, in saying the covenant. You can say it in English, aren't you, Ed? And I'm going to say it in Welsh. We're going to say it together. And so please say it in whichever language of your choice. Uh, could you all stand as you are able to do so? And we will say the covenant together. <coughs> Well, this day, in Roy Moin, he nine in Waikato, he gilled a can hard loyf neat. Ridden in Roy Mo, he will your dressing gilled, a key gerded and he that you. Melfair's husband, a fair that be that for you, husband's husband. Ridden in Roy Poppets, he can in, a poppet or two, in Juriadite at Lago Cariaggio. Amen. And so if the leaving students could remain standing, please, and everybody else could sit down, I'm going to pray for the leaving students, the valedictory prayer. No. Let us pray. Please. Lord Jesus, when you were on this earth, you met men and women, and you said, follow me. And they left their nets or their water jugs or their cloaks, and they followed you. 
You never promised wealth or worldly status or security, but instead you promised a peace that cannot be stolen and a life that death can't touch. You promised forgiveness and wholeness and joy. Dysgais ni fod jiw yn dad cariadlon, tad sy'n aros yn bryderus am y mab neu'r ferch a fradlon i ddod adre, a bigael sy'n edrych am y ganed ddafad sydd ar goll. And you told your followers that there was a cost for this way of life, this pearl of great price, this treasure hidden in the field. It would cost us our lives. And you showed us what that laying down of our lives looked like when you loved your enemies to the end, to your death on the cross. Rydyn ni'n dyfoli di ar glwyd i esi enguaredwr i fod mor fodlon i farw dros ein pechodau ni. But such love cannot be contained, not even by the grave. And when you rose again, you sent your spirit to fill your disciples with resurrection power and commanded them to go and make disciples of all nations. A'i bydyddion nhw fel ar oedd ei bod nhw wedi dod i berthynas ar tad, ar mab, ar ysbryd glan. And through their witness, we are here today. For even now, in 2020, in Wales, you call women and men to be your disciples and to go forth and share the good news and make disciples and live exemplary lives and baptize the followers of Jesus, bringing love, forgiveness, and healing to our communities. Then in Dio Hiti, am Alu Laura, Aled, Sarah, Paul, Sean, Steve, Betty Wynn, a John, if Dylan, and a Fard Arbenikon. While we recognize that you call all women and men to follow you, we affirm with joy that you have called these eight people to be leaders of your church. In its Baptist, Presbyterian, and Anibanol manifestations, to serve your people with wisdom and joy, and to proclaim the gospel courageously through word and deed. Diol honiti am danent, am a vendith e bod wedi dod ani yn a coleg, a camadoniai roi ti wedi eich roi iddyn nhw. Help them today to dedicate their lives once again to you, holding nothing back. And this is my prayer for each one of them, Lord, that every morning for the rest of their lives, John and Betty Wynn and Steve and Sean and Paul and Sarah and Laura and Aled will get down on their knees and dedicate their lives to you again, holding nothing back, so that your resurrection power will flow through them into their churches and their communities. Protect them and their families from evil and accident and temptation and pour abundant blessing upon them and those they love. Help them every day to take their burdens and cast them at your feet so they can continue to serve with courage and love, to meet conflict with peace and to bring hope to despair, so that wherever they serve, your will will be done and your kingdom come. Govanun hinoth lenenuen hargloi dan guaredur yesi grist. Amen. Please be seated. And we are going to sing that amazing song that John Brewer wrote. Normally marking is a little bit of a chore, I'm afraid to say. But I have to say that when Craig and I marked the Baptist History and Principle assignments this, this year, we were just bopping along to, <laughs> to this song. So enjoy it. John's valedictory song. Thank you, Rosa. And it begins and ends with a bit of a chant. Walk with each other and with God. Okay? So you please do join in with that as well. Walk with each other and with God. 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 Thank you. 
really want to clap. So <laughs> that was brilliant. Thank you very much, John. Now then, I know Sarah had a dream last night because Ed told me <laughs> that this service went on for five hours and Hayley hadn't even started to preach yet. <laughs> it's not quite as bad as that, but we are getting, we are getting to Hayley. And before that, we would need to have one more reading from the book of Revelation. So if Paul Asbridge and Betty Wynn could come up and read to us in English and Welsh, please. Diolch Bauer. Llyniad o'r unfedd bennod ar hugen o lifer datguddiad, y nef newydd ar ddeiar newydd. Yna gwelais nef newydd ar ddeiar newydd, oherwydd yr oedd y nef gyntaf ar ddeiar gyntaf wedi mynd heibio, ac nid oedd mor mwyach. A gwelais y ddinas sanctaidd Jerusalem newydd yn disgyn o'r nef fod i wrth ddiw, wedi pharatoi fel priodferch wedi thecau i'w gŵr. Y mae slais ichyd yr orsedd yn dweud swile y mae preswylfa diw gyda dynion. Bydd ef yn preswylio gyda hwy, byddant hwy yn bobloedd iddo ef, a bydd diw i hun gyda hwy yn ddiw iddynt. Fe sych bob deigryn o'i llygaid hwy, ac ni bydd mae'r woleth mwyach, na galar, na llefau, na ffoen. Y mae'r pethau cyntaf wedi mynd heibio. Yna dwedodd yr hwn oedd yn eistedd ar yr orsedd, wele, er wyf yn gwneud po peth yn newydd. Dwedodd hefyd ysgrifenna oherwydd dyma eiriau ffyddlon a gwir, a dwedodd wrthydd y mae'r cwbl ar ben, my fi yw alffa ac omega, y dechrau ar diwedd, yr hoddaf fi'r sychedig ddiod yn rhad o ffynon dŵr y bywyd. Amen. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. There was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among people, and he will dwell with them. And they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. 
He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Well, we're really proud of our very close association with South Wales Baptist Association. In fact, they share our building, which is great. And we're particularly glad of our links with Hayley. Hayley's been a real inspiration to us during the time that she's been with us. We just love the way that Hayley speaks her mind. She has a real passion for justice. We've really appreciated her, her prophetic voice in the association. And we're absolutely gutted that she is leaving us. We shall miss you very much. And so... We have a little present for you, which I'm going to give you now before your sermon, just in case you don't like. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Come and get your prezi. And it's actually a love spoon, and the symbolism on the love spoon is explained in the card. But basically, it's a key, which is the key to our home. And so what it's saying is that you're always welcome back here with us in Wales, and our door is always open to you because you have the key. And that's made by a local craftsman, and there's also a little gift from the college. So this is for you, from all of us at South Wales Baptist uh, College, particularly the staff, um, but all of us. And may I pray for you before yeah, you preach? Okay. Come and stand here after that. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for our sister Haley. We thank you for all the gifts that you've given her, for that voice that she has to speak up for justice, for her wisdom, for her love for you and her love for others. I pray now that you would fill her with your spirit as she speaks to us, that you'd help us to hear what you want us to hear. And I, I pray this particularly, Lord, for the students who are leaving, that you might speak to them in a particular way through what Haley is saying. And Lord, as we send her on her way and we will miss her very much, we just pray your abundant blessing to go with her wherever she goes, that she'll continue to serve you and bring about your kingdom wherever she goes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's always good to have kind words said before you speak. Uh, so that's great. And it's, it's wonderful to be with you all this afternoon, quickly becoming this evening. And as the Vice President of uh, Baptist Together, I bring greetings on behalf of our wider Baptist movement to you all on this celebration. Today symbolises a very significant moment both in your life and your calling, and in the life of the wider church. That moment when you step into the next phase of what God has called you to do after your studies. And therefore, it's important that we pause. Consider our roots in Christ, what we were called to in the first place, and to remind ourselves of our shared story. Because we know as we are rooted in Christ, we stand on a solid, firm foundation, which allows us to partner with God in the midst of uncertainty. And friends, we have a story to tell. We have a story of restoration to tell our communities. And the book of Revelation, we find out what heaven is really like. And I wonder... If you were to go into your communities and ask someone walking down the street, what do you think Christians believe about heaven? What would they say? Well, they'll probably say something along the lines of, well, Christians believe, and it's kind of funny because it's a little bit stupid, but they believe that when you die, your kind of soul leaves your body behind. It ascends to this disembodied belief like way up there, where you kind of drink Red Bull with the angels and they play harps, sitting on clouds, and they just hang out. That's what Christians believe. Some people in our churches 
think that's the end of our story. But friends, that's not the end of our story. Our story isn't us ascending into some disembodied bliss. Our story, heaven comes down. Heaven is defined best. I'm sure the theologians among us will differ, but it's described best as where God lives, the place where God is at, where his will is done. Heaven comes down in our story and God makes his dwelling place with humanity and everything around us gets restored. So John, writing this vision down in Revelation chapter 21, he sees this full restoration. Suddenly, there is no death. There's no crying. There's no pain. The former things, in other words, the earthly pain, the injustice, the inequality, all of that passes away and a new, a new created order is established. I wonder if that rings any bells. Sounds like Eden, right? Humanity fully alive in the presence of God. Everything being restored. And in this Revelation passage, John uses all these pictures to build up this breathtaking image of a new heaven and a new earth. And central to that, explaining that, is that key small verse. God has come to dwell with humans. Now, you know that. Of course you know that. You've just spent the past several years studying it at college. Why on earth am I reminding you of that today? I'm reminding you of it because it's all too simple to get bogged down in church life. It's all too simple to just carry on going from deadline, from service to service. Managing churches, meeting deadlines, and we forget, we forget how stunning this is. God doesn't say he's going to scrap everything that was created before. God comes into our mess to heal and restore, to make it fully alive. So that you and I as sons and daughters can live in a full relationship with Lord of life. That, my friends, is our story to tell. It's way better than drinking Red Bull with the angels. Like we would want to settle for anything else. Our story is stunning. Our story is amazing. God is on a mission to restore all of your communities. How does God do it? Well, of course, the answer is Jesus. God wrapping himself in human flesh, the incarnation. He steps into our pain. Our God is not some distant deity that shouts from the sidelines, stop messing up, here's how to do it. No, that's not our God. Our God jumps in to our mess. Our God jumps in to our communities to restore it. He lives, he dies, he washes away our sin. He raises again. God steps into our communities and becomes the permanent guest at the table. Dwell is a crucial word here. John uses it to conjure up the image of God dwelling in the temple, revealing his glory in the midst of all his people. And we see that, don't we, in John's gospel. The word became flesh and lived, dwelt, pitched his tent among us. And we, we gaze at his glory. God is coming to live forever in our midst. A healing, a comforting, a celebrating presence. And because of Jesus, we have a certainty of the future in uncertain terms. And you and I, as disciples, as sent ones, as ministers, have a responsibility to communicate that, to communicate with our words and actions what the new heaven and a new earth will look like in our small part of the world. I wonder if you'd humour me this afternoon and just hold out your hand, even those of you so obedient, just hold out your hand, even those of you on the Zoom. Jesus taught us the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
It's within our reach. It's within our grasp. The kingdom of heaven is here. It's now. It's in touching distance. It's close to us. It's among us. And you and I, you and I have a duty, a calling, a responsibility to show all of those around us how close heaven really is. We see in our reading from Matthew that we're reminded that the kingdom of heaven sometimes needs some patience. We see that before we see the full fullness of God dwelling in heaven, we need to wait. That's not passive waiting. I don't like waiting. Do you like waiting? I hate waiting. But it's not a passive waiting. It's not a waiting in a dark room hoping someone will come and light a candle. Instead, we wait like people early in the morning who know the sun has arisen and we are waiting for the fullness and brightness of midday. We can have a hope that God is doing a new thing. And I want to encourage you today. God is doing a new thing. So you don't have to. It's not your job to create a new agenda for church life. God's already done that. All you have to do is listen and act. Now that doesn't mean you keep the status quo. You need to be rooted in Christ and not in the church tradition. You are called to challenge, model, and live life like heaven is at hand. And when you do that, you begin to show all those around you in church and in the wider community that God has made a space for all people. You are not called to be distant from your communities, shouting from the sidelines. You are called to dwell in your communities and represent God. And when you do that, you build a bigger table, a table where God is the permanent guest, saying to our communities, the kingdom of heaven is like this and so much more. In Isaiah 25, we see that banqueting table, a rich feast where God speaks and dwells. God's promise in that Isaiah passage that Craig read at the start is a vision of a party to end all parties. We live in a world that's so much characterised by oppression and arrogance and hatred, conflict, death and mourning. And therefore, these last chapters of Revelation take up that promise of Isaiah, a time when God will wipe away all tears and invite them to the banqueting table. COVID has robbed us of so much in our communities. And I want to encourage you that as you step out after this weird period, as you step out into your fullness of your ministry, make hospitality the centre of it all. Sharing a space where God can dwell with his people in your churches and communities, create a table where God can be the permanent guest and you invite others in. You are not the one who can heal your communities. Only Jesus can do that. But through the Holy Spirit, you can show, we can show a glimpse of the promise of God by inviting them to the party. And when we live like this, wanting everyone to experience a piece of heaven now, it will be costly. It may even be painful. It will cause you to engage with those who you may have looked at from a distance but never really seen. But as you dwell in your communities, you will experience God's grace. We will learn to cheer each other on regardless if we agree on everything or not. The simple act of sharing a space is a sacred offering. <laughs> and when we create an environment to reach out to heaven, showing hospitality, we become authentic, hopeful, compassionate, challenging, and a Jesus-focused community. God is coming to live forever in our midst, a healing, comforting, celebrating presence. Friends, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and you and I, you and I get to partner with God in communicating that to the world. That is our story. That is our calling. 
That is what you're being commissioned for today, to build a bigger table. Amen. Thank you. And we trust that your knife and fork and spoon will travel with you wherever you go and Jesus will be the unseen welcome guest at every table that you share. This year we cannot share a common plate in bringing a financial offering to God as we often do on these occasions. But there is the opportunity to respond with a gift for BMS World Mission. Um, You might want to uh, give to their global COVID relief appeal as we leave the church building. There is the opportunity to give a retiring offering. Or alternatively, if you're still with us online, um, then uh, there is a a link uh, that can go into the chat, I think. Uh, But you can go and find that out on the um, on the Internet to BMS uh, World Mission, uh, their appeal for the global vaccine. We're going to spend a moment or two just with some space to reflect on what Haley has shared from Scripture and from God to us. We're going to do that with a a song and then uh, Sarah is going to come and lead us in our prayers of concern. We're almost there, but let's spend just a few moments of reflection listening to this song from Carrie Newcomer, who reminds us there is room at the table for everyone. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the privilege of being invited to your table, that you are a father who rejects no one. We thank you that there is indeed room at your table and that it's a place of love, life and acceptance. For this college, we're so grateful for the community that supports and nurtures. I pray for the students, having completed a tough year of study and ministry, that in this period of summer, it would be a time where we will know rest and restoration and a season of you speaking to us about your heart. And for the tutors who have had to find those new ways to teach and care this year, I pray that they too will find nourishment from their relationship with the one who is the bread of heaven. We also bring our church families before you, Many are now gathering, but some are still scattered. But Lord, you are present. Whether we're gathered or scattered, we are together at your table with you right in the midst. And we pray that in this season of uncertainty and isolation, that we as your people would be certain of our call as your children and the love and equipping that you extend to us. May we know, each and every one of us, that nothing can separate us from you. I pray that we would use this time to consider how we can reach those in our communities who are burdened, marginalised and isolated, and put this into practice, that they too may know the welcome at your table. Looking beyond ourselves, Lord, we recognise that our country, our world, is going through really uncertain days. There's loneliness, isolation, sickness, and division wherever we look. So many people need a welcome to your bigger table of love, forgiveness, and abundance. We ask that you will bring comfort, reassurance, and peace to everyone who is suffering through the uncertainty of these times. We remind you today of your promises to be with us, to protect, to provide and be our strength. We praise you for the development of the vaccines, but Lord, we know that so much of the world is still in desperate need. We pray that we who have more would be generous in sharing, that we would look after those who are on the margins of society and those countries who have nothing. We ask that all we do in our homes, churches, country and the world, that in it all you would guide us to be your hands and feet, to build that bigger table. We thank you that in our weakness, 
you are mighty. We thank you that we can come and present these requests before you and that you do indeed hear and respond. And so we ask these things in the name of your precious son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sarah. Well, you know, every time I watch a rugby match on the television and I hear people singing Bread of Heaven, this kind of shiver goes down my spine because the guy who wrote the tune, Kumronda, was a member of Salem. There's his name up there, John Hughes. And at the beginning of last century, there was a hymn competition and John Hughes came up with a hymn, Kumronda, sent it in. It won the competition and it was first um, performed in Kaperonda in Hopkinstown, but John Hughes was ours. He's buried out in the cemetery if you want to go and see him on the way out. That is the right place, as they always point to the wrong place. That's right. <laughs> buried in the cemetery. And so very appropriately, we're going to end our service. Um, I invite you to stand uh, so we can sing together. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. William Williams Pantacallin's words to John Hughes's tune. opportunity to thank the musicians. You've been fab. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. Thank you. Let, Let us go, go now, watching, watching over one, one another and walking, walking together, together with God, God. building a bigger, bigger table, sharing the bread of heaven, heaven committing all that we have and all that we are to God's unfolding purposes of love. And those who are joining us online may like to unmute themselves, and we're all going to say the grace together to each other, uh, whether in Welsh or English or whatever other language, speaks for it to your heart and from your heart. So now let us speak to one another the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Holy Spirit, be with us all now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all.